Well, uh, welcome to the Libertarian Alliance. Uh, we meet here every month, and you're, uh, everyone's welcome. Um, now, to, our topic tonight is uh, the evil of social cohesion. And uh, uh, speak is Bob. Uh, thank you. The, um, this uh, possibly p provocative title, or baffling title, or just weird title, is one that I, I thought I'd shove out there. Um, this is a f something of a fill-in talk. Um, but I've always got something to talk about, fairly short notice. And it ends up being the usual things we talk about in a different order, possibly, or to a different, with different emphases on the various parts. Um, I have before spoken, uh, I might as well start with it, but the famous, <coughs> not quite, quotation of Mrs. Thatcher, that there is no such thing as society. Stop, that's enough. You Harrod and Hag, say no more. We've got your banged and rights. There's no such thing as society. Society's plain exists. You are bonkers. We needn't argue any more about your philosophy or your um, economics or anything else. That's usually the way it's taken by um, professional or uh, academics. Or Kinnock. By no Kinnock. Some, something slightly different. Um, and of course he said, rather strangely, there are only individuals and their families. I think that's what she said. Yes. Yes. Which in, in well, a sense is already conceding... It wasn't only, it's just is, there are individuals and their families. Oh, and their families. Which rather concedes a lot more. But... Um, Certainly, uh, and so from then on, she was accused of saying, or, and all those who think like her, that there is no such thing as society. What there is is said, they don't tell us. Of course, I think there is a society, therefore there isn't something else, but I, she supposes, I, they supposed, that there was this atomistic individualism, dog-eat-dog, -dog, cutthroat kind of thing, or, or there ought to be, even if there wasn't. Um, and in a sense, uh, I go further than her. I've almost got to the point of dealing with these social ontologies that I'm not sure there are societies, or rather, uh, there are societal relations between persons. In fact, if you wanted to say quickly what a society was, it's what is called an economy elsewhere. It is production and exchange under law, or rather, with law courts available, under a, within a population or supported by a population, who pretty much go along with the property holdings of everyone else. It's what most of us do most of the time. As, as our mother used to say, don't touch it, it's not yours. Or mind that man, as they used to say. And of course, those of us who were 14 or 15, when they heard a mother say to her child, mind that man, we did feel quite grown up at that point. We were real men indeed. So the, um, the notice of other people and the recognition of other people's property is something fairly, fairly established. And given that, given private property and an extended order, or rather what comes from production trade, we have an economy, which could be a society, perhaps. Or also it could be a state, or a country, or a nation, or a people. These things get rather confusing, or can confuse. I had a look in a dictionary this morning, or two, about society. One, one of them said a society is something where we have a people in a nation, and it forms a state. <laughs> <laughs> you're four times worse off when you started. <laughs> now you have to know what a nation is, what a state is, what a people is. There's the old problem with the People who need peoples. And it, we're told that many people do need peoples. They like to be part of a people, our island race, or we beat Hitler, we did, or something of that, or won the World Cup, or something like that. It's thought that people can't quite have a rich and rewarding life unless they're part of something to which they didn't in the least bit contribute, which is the history of their country, their society, their nation, uh, their state. -dom. And the reason this can be an evil thing is fairly obvious. Um, war, uh, invasion, trade barriers. Oh, these things usually have to be coupled with some um, erroneous theory of economics or national greatness or development or something. But um, this will not be lacking in a people that will give room or give time to politicians and thinkers and writers who shove such stuff 
in their direction. So a state might be regarded as, in my view, as one people under a misapprehension, not under, under one God, um, or rather a people might be those who share a common delusion about their shared past, which is most history very often, the history of our greatness, of um, what we did and how we did that and how we did the other. Um, years ago, I started going to football matches at Chelsea, before they were any good, particularly, before the recent goodness, fairly recent goodness, and I'd be in the crowd, and it was, it was surging about. They were, you know, going, I'd go in the stand because it was cheap. And I tried to um, sort of get as excited as the others, and it, it, I was faking it a bit to start with. You know, you know, I was standing there and go, oh, that was a good goal. When the opponents score, <laughs> you, have to, you have to shout abuse or, go, or something, and then when your, your lot score, you take a bow. And eventually I, learned to, I actually learned to do it. And it was real, it wasn't, it wasn't faked anymore. I actually, partly because I just liked the side and I'd watch them and I, you know. And so um, that I, I could see. I, so I'd be standing next to someone whose moral worth I did not know. I knew they didn't smell particularly, possibly, or they weren't menacing me at that time. But, you know, he was my brother. And that lot down that end, they were the enemy. I might get a good kicking on the way to the station. Or as they used to chant, uh, well, you get a boot wrapped round your head, you get a boot wrapped round your head, that was one of them. Or you're, go, you're going home in a London ambulance, was another chant there was. Or, there were very various menacing things, but, uh, but partly for fun, though, um, of course, occasionally the, I didn't join in any of the, uh, the violence. But the point is, one could, get, one could get to see how someone I did not know, I would stand shoulder to shoulder, actually, I was standing shoulder to shoulder, uh, in some kerfuffle, possibly. And yet I don't know this person. I don't know his moral worth. I don't know if I should be supporting the people at the other end who might have a genuine grievance about this or that, or what it might be. But we see that that is akin to good old patriotism, or nationalism, or doing our bit. Or, uh, well, 100 years ago, <clears throat> you might have noticed, that we had the Great War. There was later a greater war, but that's, at the time it was a great war. Funnily enough, it wasn't called World War a world war, even though it was, because it, it had one before, in the 18th century, pretty much. It was in fighting in India and in Canada and all around the world, mostly against the French. Yes. So that, that was a world war, but it wasn't a great war, because <laughs> they, were, they were nowhere near the casualties. So that's one bad type of cohesion, which is ask no questions, what do I have to, who do I have to shoot? That's, that's the bad kind of cohesion. Um, <laughs> it'll, be over, it'll be over before Christmas. Uh, Speech. Speech, yes. <laughs> Writer's applause, all stand. He'll be shut before Christmas, doesn't he? <laughs> However, now our, our other social holes, um, and economy, so, having given up on societies, I'm not sure there are societies. There are people who say there are a society, which makes them something that has to be classified. But you classify them as people who call themselves society, or, or regard themselves as a society. Mm -hmm. But then they have difficult questions like, what about guests and foreigners, and you know, passers through, and holiday makers, and all that. Which, of course, is rather topical at present. So, I, having dumped societies for societal relations, peaceful, trade and production. And production refers not simply to stuff you can drop on your foot, which is usually how many people see it. So it's also services, it's also conversation, uh, gossip, um, joke telling. All these things are productive and we enjoy it. We gain from them, usually, if it's a good joke or a good bit of gossip. So all of that is also trade. It's, it's not done. It's not a money exchange, but it is a kind of economy. So, um, so having dumped, as it were, society, I also do the same for an economy. Unless it means a people subject to an authoritarian regime or a democracy, let's say. <laughs> same thing. Just a variety of an authoritarian regime is a democracy. So now we have producers, and consumers too, but mostly producers, 
under a, a regime, under a set of regulations, laws, taxes, prohibitions, compulsions, and the rest of it. Now, if you want to have meaning to the term an economy, then it's a set of producers or a population under a state, under a government. That makes it an economy. They have, because they have certain, and don't they, and don't they just, certain powers to tax, subsidise, prohibit, and compel. So if you must have the, the term economy, that is an economy. But that's not normally what is meant, because in the background is the idea that, well, all right, there's an, we're an economy, but we're an economy in a world economy, therefore it's not simply sealed, we have to look at the, um, the in and out, which is true enough, but then I wouldn't use the economy for the whole world either. So if I must use the word, uh, this is back, referring back to a talk I gave about should libertarians sound different or talk differently or use different conceptions or terms, and it can pay unless you appear utterly cranky and out of it, but it may, some people may be attracted and may see the sense in it. So I would use economy, I would try to restrict economy simply to a population under a regime, which is different to another population under a regime. At least it's different simply because it stops here and starts with another one, even if they have the same taxes, pro tem and the same this and the same the other, because they might change at any moment. And of course they will never be equally the same, pretty much. I think that's safe to claim that. So if you must use the economy, that's an economy. Otherwise, I just drop the term and there are economic relations or commercial relations. So commercial relations become a subset of these interpersonal trades, swapping one thing for another. What next has to go? Well, nation. Uh, in a sense, a nation is a bit like a murderer. I mean, if you murder someone, you're a murderer, right? So if you've done nationalistic things, whether it's defence or attack, or setting up border posts, or insisting on this is your this is your dictionary or that is your official language, whatever it might be. Of course, this can shade off into culture, which could be entirely libertarian and different in one part of the world. But that does no harm to say that they have a national cuisine or a national dress. Or that's not particularly objectionable, or at all objectionable, I don't suppose. I mean, in the same loose way, there used to be talk about um, the English race. And this was before any talk about genetics and the rest of it. Oh, of course, you probably were white, right, but it was more of a, a shared history, a, a common misbelief, disbelief, no, misbelief, wrong belief about your past. So very often these things are um, tied it up uh, uh, made untrue, that means. So we all know what we did when and how it worked and the, the, the defeats are downplayed and Agent Corps has spoken up. But the fact that England lost all the properties in, in France is <coughs> entirely, by the way, apart from Calais, which was very small, very, very small, and lasted quite a while, but they mentioned that was gone. And I don't think the Channel Islands are much to um, beat the chest about. But, so in any event, people always pick and choose their histories. You know, Famous defeats we have known. There are not many of those. Of some, some, if, especially if it's Dunkirk. There we are. It's a defeat turned into a, an evacuation. Wars are not won uh, by evacuations. That's a Churchill. The trouble with nations, especially, and it's also nation states, is that um, with an economy, you know, like that's your car, this is my car. That's my car's engine, that's your car's engine. I have to tend to my car and its engine, um, if I'm a prime minister or something, perhaps. And so the nation is something which has to be run. Who runs the nation? Who should run the nation? Who should choose those that run the nation? Well, this is the, this is the um, romance of democracy, as um, Daniel B. Klein has written on this very well that um, there's a big gushy crush on the people winning their wonderful democracy. In other words, being still stuck with the state, but now it's there so they don't complain so much, even though it's now taxing them more than it ever did <laughs> under those wicked, unelected persons, kings, ministers, and whatever. So um, if, if, you, if you're drunk on the people's romance, then who runs the country? Well, the people run the country. 
through the, the appointees, the, those they elect. Yes, right. Would you like to buy? Would you like, like to buy a famous bridge from me? Um, so, self-government. Now we have a nation and a society and a people. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to they're going to self-govern, of course, through other cells. <laughs> Doesn't sound like self-government to me. Uh, what else is objection? What have, what have I thrown out? Well, states. Well, states are a reality, in a way, but they need not. They need not be. Or rather, they're a, they're a display of force and threat that makes them real. The rest of it isn't real. Uh, the world economy, I would allow in to my on list of on uh, correct ontologies or ontological objects, um, but I wouldn't call it the world economy. I might say it's it's the market process, and those who are not by force kept out of it will pretty much be in it. And it's rather unfortunate, like Robinson Crusoe, until Friday turns up. We're, it's up to you whether you say he has an economy at all. He certainly doesn't have much of an exchange economy, though he has to allocate his time and effort, which is why economists like to use uh, Robinson Crusoe as an example of to explain opportunity cost, and that's fair enough. But, but the world economy um, is simply the market process. It's simply production and exchange. The idea that there is naturally, there just is a, a national economy in some sense other than something suffering from the interventions of a particular government is silly. We know it isn't true because we are buying stuff from all over the place, sending stuff all over the place. What's going on here? Oh no, we have our, there is a world economy, of course, but it works all the better some would say, for having national monies and national monetary policies and national fiscal policies and national legal... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, right, OK, that's what you say. It must be true. A lot of people believe them, so or don't doubt them particularly or aren't interested or <laughs> find the whole thing a bit boring and esoteric and anyway, it's there, what are you going to do? Uh, you must have met these people. <laughs> <laughs> Most of your life, basically. <laughs> so, um... At the world level, not a world economy, because there isn't a single world, thank God, a single world political authority as yet. But it almost seems to be the ideal, though I don't think it's... There will be attempts at such a thing, but... Um, you could have a kind of world live and let live policy whereby many of the um, laws and other things became very similar all around the world. I think that's quite likely to happen with you know, weights and measures and names for things. Even the same companies might turn up all around the world. I think it's very likely that would happen. And I've no objection to call that world economy. It's, unless, of course, I reserve the word economy to mean precisely you know, producers under a state. So having... So to return to the point of the talk, precisely, uh, what's so evil about social cohesion? Well... Democracy, that's pretty bad. Or rather, it's an unnecessary evil. We can do better without it. Not to say I want some dictator or monarch or some. No, of course, being libertarians, that's not what we want. We want even, there can be separate jurisdictions. That's not so bad. Why don't you warn people as to what likely, what is, what is expected of them before you turn up at the door? Um, we discussed some years ago the the property owner can't simply put landmines in his front garden and not tell anybody because they shouldn't be there anyway. <laughs> you know, it's, I think you ought to tell people that the spring guns are here and man traps and various other things. Um, so the real evil in the occasion is it's thought that you have to have as a, 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 a demo democratic government. That's You all cohere in that view and I don't regard that as a one with happy consequences. A war, of course. Great wars. Appalling wars. It, it saddens me. Uh, some people dispute this. I, I get a vague, more than a vague whiff. But it's not simply, as it ought to be, deploring the appalling slaughter of 1914 and what followed on all sides, but celebrating the valour 
and the sacrifice of our brave boys. I don't like that. I quite like the poppy display, just you know, aesthetically it worked. Except the French could say, well, ours will go around again nearly, nearly the same because they lost considerably more. And the Germans probably regard it as chicken feet compared to, sadly, what, what followed in the next one. Uh, so I don't like this celebration of our collective this, that, and the other. Uh, being a boy from the 60s, those are the days when we can have a, a lovely war, the film and the musical, and say how awful it was and how stupid it was and how necessary it was. Now we have Max Hastings, I believe, amongst others, say, oh, good, woo, I had to face down the Kaiser. You storm. Do it again, do it again. You storm. Who? You storm. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So on that, I... I cohere not with that belief, and I, I, it was a dreadful thing that people, well, they didn't know what it was going to be like, that's for sure. Although the Boer War, and more importantly, as someone pointed out, the, the American Civil War, sort of told them that there will be barbed wire, there will be trenches, it would not be easy to attack and take places, there would be, no, not the word was taken, much more machine guns, of course, or rapid fire the rifles, uh, the Germans at the Mons Canal were hit by such a, a well-trained bunch of uh, rifle shooters that they thought, it, they thought it was machine guns. I don't brag about this. <laughs> I think you pointed out. But, uh... So um, that's the kind of cohesion we can do with that. What kind of cohesion do I want? Well, agreement as to... Oh, there's a cohesion in the sense of interdependent trade. That is a useful cohesion. You hang together. You enable one another. You don't have to support each other in all aspects of your religion or your voting patterns or even, even vote for anybody particularly. Even, even be under the same authority. The trade can go on. So the important thing is that I dissolve away the idea of an, an economy by saying, but what is there? Uh, there are separate monies, but there need not be. Say there was one money. Easily, it could be easily be the case. Bitcoin, gold, whatever. Uh, so there's one money. Uh, there ought not to be trade barriers, so put that, that aside. Uh, so what would happen then? Would the, surely there would be something that had to be managed, something. If not a world, if not a, a national economy, there had to be a, a world economy to be managed. But no, people. And a, a so-called economy, or the market process, is all management, top to bottom. Consumers are managing their affairs, producers are managing their affairs, those who ship stuff, which is productive too, are managing their affairs. There is only trade between pairs all around. There is no nation trading with a nation. There's no collective buying. The thing integrates perfectly well. In that sense, it coheres. But I've come to reject even coherence, because that suggests something good about... No, the good thing is that you don't have to agree on your religion, language, many things. You simply agree that it's a, it's a good deal and you trade. Uh, this much I admire. So the only thing I want people to agree upon is to live and let live. All the, all the standard wishy-washy liberal stuff. Leave each other alone unless, unless attacked. All such things as that. So I see the evil of co social cohesion as the idea that it's, it's a good thing that people would rush, rush together as one to do something evil to other singular ones or whole ones, nations of ones. But in the sense of, in, of worldwide integration, mutual independence, peace, and uh, productiveness, I'm all for that. And if that's cohesion, then I'm for that. Commercial or economic cohesion, but not the other kind. Thank you. John? Catalax. Discuss. Right on both sides of the paper. <laughs> The candidate isn't, should not write on both sides of the paper at once. That's in 1066 and all that, isn't it? Contract, expand, and explode. It also says for an exam question. Yes, catalaxy. Uh, that is what it means, isn't it? Yes, that's, that's the word instead of an economy, is it? Because it is, well, but why isn't it an economy? Ah, because. Let's uh, 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 expand. There's no it's, single organisation or person. I mean, yes. it, it comes from economists, household, in the Greek the original, where. You know, you've got different goals that you can maximise 
that are particular to uh, either a person or a household. It can extend to an organization, but the idea that once you've got five of them, they add up to it. No, they're all completely separate. What well, economies, uh, a firm is an economy. It interacts with other firms, but they, they don't add up to a, an economy. Um, it, that, that's, that's not possible. So, so, um, so the word that Hayek suggests for that is cataplexy. Well, no, it's Watley. Huh? Watley. Uh, Watley. Oh, sorry, it wasn't the original. Uh, uh, Watley got it, for, uh, Hayek got it from Watley. Not Waitley. Right. No, Watley. Probably. I think it was Watley, yes, he, yeah. um, uh, he was Professor of Economics at Dublin. Oh, yes. But the, the, the politicians, of course, don't like the word because it seems to suggest that it's something that they ought not to interfere with. It is the spontaneous interaction. In the same way, a society is the spontaneous interaction of individuals rather than a single agent or organisation. Society is not an organisation. I should have said that, yes. Uh, and the catalaxy is not an that's obviously what Mrs. Thatcher meant yeah. in the famous yeah. quote. Society is not a person with a conscience who can act. That's really, yes, she meant it's not, a, it's not an agent. Yes. Uh, but she believed in the economy. And, and Sadly, there, yes. Thereby, mm. a sad mistake. But there are very talented, more intelligent chaps than I, doesn't make them right, of course, who um, believe in economies and uh, economic management, and there has to be, um, I don't know, the central bank, apparently, these days. As, has to act as the uh, steerer, the accelerator, the brake. And without um, central bank monetary policy, uh, things will go uh, rack and ruin, they think. This is a very modern idea. Even Keynes didn't think quite that. He was more on the fiscal side. He thought monetary policy was ineffective. Yes, but, but uh, Cadillac is a good word, but a bit of a mouthful. And, uh, so I haven't used it, but... Uh, I, I can see the point in it, it because an economy sounds like something, like an engine, a car, a, <clears throat> something well, to be adjusted. A single organisation. Single organisation. Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, yes. Uh, sometimes I say there is no economy, there are just economisers, corporates and individual. That might also mm. sort of get the point across. The whole thing has no plan. Mm. There's a congru congruence of plans. Um, Partly, I'm also, I also don't like the term uh, coordinate. Uh, coordinates are simply positions on a two-dimensional graph. I think that's how it you know, first came about. So a, coordin a coordinate is a... Well, there are two of them, at least. So you have a position. So, of course, you have a position in an economy. But what does that mean? You're surrounded by other producers. Some your rivals, some your suppliers, and some neither one nor the other. There'll be a supplier to your suppliers, possibly, and there'll be a producer for... You know, see how it works. So, so your relations are not with one thing coming at you, or you responding to. All these producers, or all these economisers... So I can say there is no economy, but there is a whole lot of economisers. That's what makes an economy. But there is no one big plan. There is no great success... No, the economy is growing. I mean, of course, you can cash that out into something which makes sense. That there is an aspiration to have an economy. Yes, that's true. Yes, a transparent, managed, yes, fully managed the whole thing. Yeah. If you were to manage the whole thing as a single organisation, then it would be an economy. Well, you, you have work, to, but well, you have to manage the consumers and the workers too. I think, Martin, and even then, it wouldn't work. But uh, I think Mars has got the idea that you don't need to economise mm -hmm. the economic problems. Vanish has been solved. Yeah, that's basically his idea. Paul? You seem to be saying um, that beyond a sort of uh, adherence to the rules of liberalism, libertarianism, and the free market, all of the kinds of cohesion or coherence are necessarily authoritarian and bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not have been saying that, but that's, if yes, that's yes. what well, you're saying. It's, it's, that if, doesn't seem to me to be right. If I gave that impression, I should not have done. Um, Plainly, there's all sorts of uh, manners and yeah. freely adopted rules. And, and more on stronger things than that, yeah. like language. Uh, it's easier for me to interact with other people who speak English. Very difficult for me uh, to interact with people who don't speak English, which is why I tend to be a lot more... Fellow, and, and a lot of cultural things, you know, interests, uh, love of uh, types of music and so forth. I mean, there's a lot of coherence around these things, which none of these things are authoritarian. No. And it's why Britain has more in common with 
uh, the United States, Australia, and New Zealand, and then secondarily, European, wider European culture. And why we care more, when we read that people have been blown up, we care more about these people than we do about some, you know, African or Asian or I, some of these persons. Yes. So, uh, uh, so, so we do, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of coherence like that. And also, I think some cultures are certainly going to be more conducive to the liberal ideal than others. You know, this, this you know, hardline sort of caliphate-seeking Islamists are going to be very difficult. No matter how much the Magpops train, they do seem to want to sell us the, the oil they've stolen. It's, it's, uh, it's not, they're, they're not seeking, you know, they don't, they're just simply not interested in those rules of, uh, of liberalism. You know, communists flying in the face of reality are not interested in these rules. They're interested in imposing an entirely different oh. at all. So, so, so I think there is a, there is a reason why there's, there's going to be tension in the world between people who do simply want to be left alone and they are going to have to defend themselves against those people who don't want to leave them alone. The true, true. That is true. But are, sadly, you're within economies of scale. But and sadly, within these, within these persons may solve their problem by having an army, a war plan. Um, a preemptive strike, uh, and all that. In other words, in order to ensure something bad doesn't happen, ensure that something bad does happen eventually. Maybe not as bad as one's worst fears, but as we see well, from all kinds of well, I, 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 sure, there were all kinds of cultures in Europe in 1914, and uh, there were plans to deter to deter aggression, uh, which sadly didn't work. And the countries that didn't have plans to do aggression, though they, I know they have mountains, uh, Switzerland, for example, and the Irish Republic. Well, Ireland. Yeah, the island of Ireland. The populations within the island of Ireland were not, I think, conscripted. Were they conscripted in the north? Well, they didn't have to be conscripted. They no, they, they didn't. <laughs> they, there were already two armies in Ireland about to go to war. Well, even in the and south. They, they instead of going to war with each other, they joined the British army, went to war with Germany. I don't discount cultures or cultural matters, or cultural differences, you know, of cuisine, music, dress, the, the, whatever it might be, sexual mores, and all that, that's going to be different around the world, but it's going to be very often, some people from other cultures will be closer to some people in that culture, and some people in that culture can be further away. So even though you're all Englishmen or all this or all the other, you may find that foreigners are more your liking. Oh yeah, I'm sure there are lots and lots of foreigners I would prefer to come here than there's English people. But <laughs> I was talking about Africans. Quite, quite. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, but yeah, there's a separate, separate point. Things that, um, regarding the, the people's adherence to the rules of the democracy in the state, it's very interesting about democracy. There is a fetish for it at the moment. Oh yes. And um, and in the in the re in the result of the, uh, the, the Scotch uh, referendum, and uh, yeah, that, that was propelled by nationalism, to a lesser extent in Wales, that people want a separate entity. And so they, now they, they promise these things. They want to try and set up various regional organisations with a lot of power around England, breaking up into things and more direct democracy. This has never been popular. They, they've had a lot of referendums in the North East and Manchester. You want mayors, and it's only London that was out to vote for this. But, you want mayors, you want regions, and everybody voted overwhelmingly no. They decided they're going to get them anyway. Um, <laughs> but the, re the reason, the reason, of course, people don't want them is as soon as you set these organisations up, they immediately go. People know what it means. It means a whole bunch more rules and regulations of these, as these, as these little uh, power bodies seek to uh, invent reasons for their existence. You know, so this, this you knew what happened the Scotch and the Welsh are much more keen on banning them because they're always leading the way. Whenever there's a ban. They're, they're right, you know, fox hunting, smoking, whatever it is. You know. they're, they're the ones that want to, you know, price of alcohol, you know, anything you fancy, whatever hideous libertarian measure they want to dream of, they're the first ones to think that they can solve it by some sort of legislation. And, and people in England know that this is exactly the sort of horror that awaits them as soon as you have these self-appointed committees, uh, sorry, elected committees, you know, running the bit. The other, but the, other, the other thing, of course, is that, that there isn't that fellow feeling. Uh, the, every time, Somebody sets up some sort of organisation that's slightly different in one town to another. People talk about postcode lottery. They say, well, you, can't, you cannot simply have cancer being treated better here than over there. It's got to be the same everywhere. Either everybody's dropping dead 
<laughs> everywhere or it's, or it's the best in the world. We will not tolerate different levels of service here and there. And, uh, and the Welsh have actually got themselves into a lot of trouble by completely fucking up the management <laughs> health service uh, to the point where everybody is leaving and going to England for treatment because uh, the chances of, death, chances of death in Wales are so disastrous. That's impressive. Um, and, uh, but I think people, people know this. You know, people are in this country at least somewhat suspicious of their rulers. They, 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 will go, they will go along with an awful lot of the bullshit they're fed um, and the ideological trends. But there is a lot of suspicion. It's true to say. I think that is, that's why people are voting. Think it can be true to say that at the national level, you could have a government that forces all the regions to be more more liberal than many of them would wish to be. Yes. If they were left alone to yeah. do as they wished, that's true. Well, mm. We have to argue for you know, liberal institutions, liberal measures, and um, since we aren't going to get it at the national or the regional level, level either <laughs> for a while. We can just simply leave it, leave the entity responsible. Um, in some ways, although I suppose libertarians say, well, if, if a region wishes to get out, that's fair enough. But if it happens to be a port um, with a major river and um, major defences, which are now theirs, though they're probably pointing out to sea rather than inwards, you can see how this might cause trouble. Um, assuming that the rest of them fear such things as wars coming along and being prepared for them. So they also want to leave the national debt bubble. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes. Oh, I hadn't thought Thank of that. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. That's not ours. That's yours. That's, that's well, that's money that you spent on us. <laughs> okay, the cheque's coming. No, it's your problem. <laughs> well. Mm. Of course, no, there is another popularity of democracy out there. Elected oligarchy. Mm. Yes. Oh, democracy is a way of having the people not rule anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is like ruling slavery, self representative, self ownership. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just not democracy, but, but it's, uh, it's sort of one of the legitimizations of the state to call it people are just ruling themselves. Mm. Whenever we give them what we think is good for them, even though all the opinion polls show they don't want it. Oh, well, um. They're still ruling themselves. Coming back to the idea of an economy, rather like a car, the prime ministers now have to dash back from uh, discussing with other mm. Weltführern how things should be in the world and coming back to give us the latest bulletin. There was a time when a, a, a British prime minister would take, take the waters in Baden, Baden for three months, <laughs> probably seeing his mistress on the side, and um, things wouldn't fall to pieces without him not being there. Yeah, so the, the, the analogy is that an, an economy, nation state, because it's mostly economy, so it's, unless it's military matters, um, it's like a, a, a tourist coach full of tourists, and the driver's at the front, and they're going around a twisty mountain road in Spain, and they have to be doing this and this. And if it wasn't for that, you know where you'd be? In the sea, up the. And that, they don't quite say that, but of course, that's, that's the image. It has to be who's in control, who's running the country. Oh, no one else should bloody well hope. But, um, but they can certainly do things called running the country. Of course. Yes, there can be monetary policy, financial policy, fiscal policy, labour policy, the rest of the policy, policy, policy. Even a policy of reducing policy uh, in, you know, in an ideal world. <laughs> they, they would, they, they, so I, I, I would say, here I, I would... Uh, come over all, all sorts of Proudhon and say, what is, what is policy? Policy is theft. What is policy? Policy is threat. Policy is prohibition. Policy is compulsion. That is what policy is. But it's for the good of the people. Uh, yes. No, no. I think it's no, as, as we all do, I think. But, but this idea, oh, it's only policy. Well, I've said before, I think, Maybe here or somewhere else. Um, he's not a policymaker. He's a bleeding politician. That's what he is. Or he's a bleeding careerist A to a bleeding politician. That, I mean, you're a policymaker. You have policymakers in business. You have policymakers in the arts. You have policymakers in politics. It's just policymaking. No, it's not. It's saying, thou shalt do this, or you're going to 
be fined, on non-payment of a fine, you're going to be in prison. On an attempt to escape from prison, you're going to be hauled back. If your friends use violence to help you escape from prison, you will be shot dead like dogs. Policy making with a gun. Yes. Mm. Ultimately. That is what it is. Now, sometimes a gun is required, but not here. Policy makers. Detestable. What are you policy makers? Policy makers. We're not politicians, we're not states, well, apart from statesmen, they don't mind being statesmen, they don't like being politicians. They're policy makers. Law makers. As if law had to be discovered every five minutes. <laughs> Language seems to work perfectly well, well, I know we have a lot of the new words, but <laughs> sadly, or misuse of the old words, but still it didn't have to be created by a state, and the same goes for law. Same goes for law, we have more than enough law, was it? Was it Mises said about the... By the time they got to the Married Woman's Property Act, that was about it. That was, that was all, the, all, the, all the law required. But what of what what all these modern chemicals and stuff? Surely a, a new law is required every time. No. The point with law is it deals with, it, it's abstract. It hangs back. It says harm, damage. These are the things for courts to determine. We haven't got to say this is a rule for this chemical, this is a rule for that chemical. No, no, no. Run a business, cause no harm, or make reparation, or there is a, an injunction slapped on you, whatever it might be. There are ways of dealing with all this. Of course, we'll find these things out. They're not entirely stupid because they ask people who know things to tell them about it, which is more than most politicians do when this lot is just shoved through as um, necessary legislation. Well, it's, it's, it's nothing around the multiplicity of laws. I mean, it's, it's utterly corrupting because the laws that they pass now are just sort of broad brush, nebulous, sort of catch-all laws that almost anybody will have broken at some point, and they're all going to get judicious. If they ever feel like arresting you, they can just you know, <laughs> go down with something. Well, I believe like which laws it is. I believe in America. America. Nobody could possibly know what they are or understand their interpretation. Or it's even worse in America, yeah, apparently. Like most most yeah. most citizens are, are violating 40, 40 different laws, mm. so-called, at any one time. Mm. Can be hauled away. Not only that, but their money can be frozen, so they can't defend themselves. Then they get a for free useless attorney. They have a they have a prosecutor who doesn't care whether you're guilty or not. He's just going to get his numbers up. Uh, the thing is appalling. John, you you mentioned the nation with the concession that it could be conceived of culturally, but the original idea of the nation was purely a cultural with the focus on language. Yes, no, I, mean, yes. I mean, ultimately, not only linguistic, but primarily linguistic uh, people. And it was an entirely separate question whether politics was involved in that at all. And it was the politicians who seized upon the idea of the nation and then tried to politicize it. And so we're just here to represent, to protect the nation. And it, again, it's a modern, Legitimization. There are only a handful of them. I mean, they originally they just needed one. Uh, the uh, the emperor of God. So then, then he became what well, is divinely he's divinely inspired anyway. Well, he's protecting you from foreigners. <laughs> and now it's been got down to well, look, we give you welfare, and uh, you know they've, they've still got these things that they hold on to to try and. And which people accept, of course, because if they, they wouldn't be used if they weren't accepted. But so, so it's a very important legitimization. Somehow the state represents and protects the nation, but that wasn't the origin of the term. It simply meant the people. Yes, I haven't said much about the linguistic community, which was, a, was at one time a great deal of nationalism. This is oh, well, it's, uh, it's the whole of the nation. Point made by Mises. And of course, the, um, the people misguided radicals like Tom Paine made more trouble, unwittingly, of course, when he started getting the Americans to call themselves Americans instead of English. That more or less wasn't such a good thing, because it's more or less warmongering, although Paine didn't realise it, I guess. And of course, Burke was even worse. I think Burke was consciously warmongering against the French. In that reflections on the French Revolution, mm. but, so I think it is misguided radicals. Uh, you know, they, they, they um, you know, it's a, oh, you know, it's the old Roman Marshall, wasn't it? it? Says he means well, it's no good unless he does well. <laughs> These people meant well, but they didn't do so well. It's quite re funny reading American historians because you get the impression that there was this English-speaking society that got invaded by the British. 
<laughs> they were the, the British. That's why I like to refer to southern Britain, uh, southeastern Britain, that's, new, that's Australia, New Zealand, that's <laughs> western Britain, which is over there. Not that this is sort of a grandiose claim by some, some nationalists, but there's a point of, what? <laughs> point of causal explanation. That's pretty much what it was, wasn't it? That's, that's how it goes. Uh, riding along saying the English are coming, the English are coming. Well, the English army was certainly coming, yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah so, uh, it's, it is distinguishing themselves, even though they're English speaking. Well, that, that's the start of it, of course. That's how they, they start becoming a nation by. No, the red coats were Germans, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, were, they, were, they were Germans. Germans. Yeah. And also the French, <laughs> the French army was over there. <laughs> Anymore? Anymore? Anyone else to speak? Oh, thank you very much indeed, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.